I definitely don't set out to make a coat every year, but somehow one always ends up on my cutting table. As soon as this one was released just a couple of weeks ago, I knew I would be making it and I cannot wait to tell you all about my version. But real quick, if you're new here, I'm Lindsay. Hello, welcome. I sew all my own clothes and I am so glad you found me. Be sure to introduce yourself in the comments so that I can give you a formal hello. And for everyone watching, be sure to like this video so that YouTube will show it to other people. Videos highlighting my makes and sewing patterns go up every Monday. I already have dozens for you to watch if you want a little binge. Check out the playlist in the top right corner of your screen. It opens in a brand new tab so you will not lose your place here. Okay, let's get into this make. The pattern is Vogue 1866, and the website describes it as a loose-fitting, lined, double-breasted, A-line coat with mandarin collar, set-in flared sleeves, side seam pockets, and length variations. View A is hip length and has purchased a flexible braid trim. View B is mid-knee length. As I said, as soon as I saw this in Vogue's early spring collection, I knew I'd need to make it. Something about how sort of mod it is and simple, but I don't know, it just has a little bit of something something. I knew it would be easy to sew and just give my winter wardrobe a little something special without taking weeks and weeks to sew. The fabric was actually from my stash. It's an Italian wool from Mood that I got a couple of years ago with plans for another coat. That obviously never happened, and honestly, I like it for this design better than the original one anyways. Isn't it funny how that happens sometimes? Truly, the hardest part of making this coat was matching the plaids. But making things a little bit easier was that sort of obvious and distinct white stripe. So I used that as my starting point and took everything else from there. I did not want that bold stripe to go right across my bust apex, so I made sure to position it just above and below, kind of splitting the difference um, between the width of two white stripes and putting my bust apex there. From there, I matched side seams, the center back seam, and the arm size, and I am just thrilled with how all the stripe matching turned out. It definitely takes a little bit more time, but it is so worth it in the end. This fabric is not available online anymore, but I found three other large scale plaid wool coatings from Mood, Stylemaker Fabrics, and Fabric.com that I also love. Links to each of these is in the description box. So fitting this coat was obviously not very difficult. The whole thing is very loose fitting. So the most important part of it was, well, I guess there's two important parts, but the first one is the shoulder. If you can get the shoulder to fit right, the rest will fall as intended. So just be sure to double check the shoulder length, the slope and position. A few minutes of tissue fitting will go a long way with this one. The other sort of important thing about fitting with this one is just the length of it all. Um, I found the sleeve length to be just about perfect for me. I don't typically have issues with sleeves being too short or too long. I think I have pretty average, you know, length arm. Um, but be sure to check that on yourself. And I did want to ask you guys one question, and that is the length of the body of the coat. It's supposed to be hip, hip length, which it is, but maybe for me, it should be a few inches longer or maybe even a few inches shorter would be really cool. I just don't think I like all the extra width of the hem hitting at the literal widest part of my body, but I could just be overthinking it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, another thing that I want to point out that kind of goes along with the shoulder fitting part is that this pattern calls for shoulder pads. Um, there is nothing to be afraid of when using shoulder pads in coats like this, and it's important to remember that the pattern is drafted for that extra fullness in your shoulders. So if you do not include it, um, the shoulders can kind of look a little bit droopy um, and maybe not hit your shoulder exactly where it should. The shoulder pads in this are just a uh, half inch thick and definitely not what you remember from blazers in the 80s. So don't be afraid to throw them in. No one will ever notice. It just gives that extra structure right at the top of your coat. All right, now for the not so good parts of this coat. 
first, and this is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, but the pocket bags extend beyond the length of the hem. I have literally never come across this before, so of course I didn't think to double check it, but you can see the bottom of the pocket bag kind of bunches up inside the hem. I'm going to have to reopen the hem or a side seam in the lining or something and cut the pocket bag back. I don't think I did anything wrong. I think that they're just longer than the hem and the designers didn't check it like they should. I don't know what happened. Um, but it's definitely weird that they are kind of bunching up in the hem and it feels weird and kind of looks a little bit bulky as well. Uh, the second thing I want to point out is that the coat bodice is not interfaced. I'm guessing they did that to make it more of like spring weight and like a little bit cooler to wear, but you can tell that it is lacking structure. Uh, not the end of the world, but if you know you like a structured coat or if that's what you're going into or you're using a fabric that's pretty um, like loosely woven, you're going to want to add some interfacing. Just want to point that out. Other than that, though, everything turned out as expected. I made view A and omitted the trim because I felt like that would be a little bit too much with all the plaid, but I did not hesitate to make those covered buttons from view B. Uh, covered buttons on a plaid coat are just so special. Uh, they sell like a little covered button kit uh, that includes like, you know, all the parts that you need plus a little tool. Um, and it just, you know, makes quick and easy work of making your own covered buttons and really elevates the look, I think. Oh, and if you are curious about the dress that I am wearing underneath this coat, you will have to come back next week for that pattern review. I'm going to do them separately, but I've got a ton of links in the description box, including the pattern and three different similar fabrics. I've also linked the fabric, the fabric covered button kit, try and say that three times fast. Uh, be sure to give the description box a glance before you go. I've also linked to my most recent pattern review, which was for a cute pajama set. So if you haven't seen that video, click on the bottom right of your screen. It'll take you right there. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye.